Let's see how it works. So then first you take the incremental level zero database backup on the source database, you move it to the third environment and you restore it on the third database. Then, as I said, you keep taking the incremental level one database backups, move them to the third and, re and recover the database on the third environment. You do this in a loop fashion until you have your downtime. So when you finally comes to our migration window, now you will take the final level one incremental backup on the source system. After you stop your source system, of course, you put it in mount or read-only mode. You take the final level one database backup and you recover the database on the target system. And then on that point in time, you have your source and target systems aligned at the same SCM. Finally, as the last step, you open your database on the target environment with reset logs. So if there are SQL net connectivity between the source and target database, then most of the users will use data guard instead of RMM incremental backups as a migration storage. However, when migrating to a remote data center or maybe even to the cloud, you can, you can end up in a situation where you don't have SQL net connectivity between the source and target system. In that case, RMM incremental backups are very useful. Also, when the source database release can't be installed on the target host, this is another good use case for this method. If you can install the same source database release on the target host, probably you will do so and set up a data guard in this case, as I said in the previous slide. Blockchain tracking or BCT is recommended to speed up your incremental backups. With BCT or blockchain tracking, Oracle will track all the blocks that changed in your data file since the latest level one backup. And then when you trigger a new level one incremental backup, Oracle will pick those blocks and put your backup set. So you won't need to do a full data file scan to take the blocks that changed since the latest level one backup. Also, if you use ARM and compression, this can significantly reduce the duration and the size of the backups. The size is because you're gonna compress them and duration because as you will have much smaller backup sets, if you have IO throttling in your tape driver or in your disk where you keep your backups, as you're writing less data to it, you're gonna speed up the process. It's very recommended to secure your ARM and backups with encryption. Remember that when you move the backups from one system to the other, during this in-transit migration, you need to be sure that those files can't be accessed by anyone. So the way to do this is either using table space encryption on the source system. So if you have TDE enabled there, your backups will have encrypted table space. So you don't need to care about encryption of the backups because these backups has already encrypted table spaces. However, if you don't have TDE enabled on, the, on your source system, then it's important to use ARM and encryption to guarantee that nobody will be able to access the data of your backups. By default, each ARM and channel will back up a completed data file. This is, a good, this is good in cases where you have a small size table spaces where the data file size will not be bigger than 32 gigabytes. However, when you have big file table spaces where a data file can be bigger than one terabyte, having one channel backup in a terabyte size of data file is not a good strategy. So in that case, what you can do is use multi-section backups where you're gonna split your data file into chunks and each channel, then you can allocate a channel for each of those chunks, which will speed up your process. To recover the latest changes, use the incremental backup or archive lots. So in the concept animation that I showed just before, we used the incremental backups. However, if those incremental backups are taking a lot of time, or if you notice that you only generate like three archive lots since the latest incremental backup you took, then instead of creating a new incremental backup, you can simply move those archive logs to the target system and recover them. You don't need to take an extra incremental backup. 